Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, RaySawville.com, and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing Facebook Event Setup Tool and how you can use it to dynamically set up things on your website to pass through events and parameters without adding any code. The reason why this is so powerful is because you do not need a developer to do this at all. You just need the base pixel on your website, and then you can take off running from there and take care of all the setup on your end. So let's dive into it. Here's the help article that I'll have below down in the description, so make sure to check that out if you wanna know how to get to this tool or if you have any questions about configuring the tool that are not in this video. But if you go over to your ads manager account, which I'm going to assume you know how to get there by going to business.facebook.com, once you get to your ads manager account, you're going to wanna to click on this hamburger menu in the upper left-hand corner and then go to events manager so if you click on events manager it's then going to pull up your pixel and where all of your events are so make sure you get to this screen right here where you're able to configure your pixel and set it up now this is assuming that you already have your pixel configured and set up if you don't know how to do that there will be a link somewhere on the screen um, on how to configure and set up that pixel but once you do that and you get to that step you can go to setup here in the upper right hand corner and go to set up new events now Prior to this tool being released, you had to manually install this event code. And when doing that, you had to set up all of the different view content, search, all the different um, elements for events and send that over to your developer friend or do it yourself. But now with this tool, if you don't have too much going on in the back end, this allows you to set this up dynamically on the website, which prior to that wasn't something that was readily available. So again, if you go to setup, set up new events, click on use Facebook's event setup tool, and then type in your website. So I'm gonna go to my website and I actually have a page on here that is not indexed right now, I'm actually working on it. So I'm gonna open this up in the background. And of course it's not going to open right now. One second. All right, so now you can see this page loaded and what happens is this little widget over here on the left hand side pops up where you're able to set up your events on your page. Now, if you're wondering what an event is, it's just another way for you to track how people are interacting with your website. So if you have an e-commerce website, you may want to track add to carts, people who are searching your website, people that are viewing specific content, if they're initiating checkout, there's so many things that you can do. But for the most part, the biggest thing that you're going to want to track if you're an e-commerce website, for example, is going to be something like add to cart or purchase, or maybe even initiate checkout. And then on the lead generation side, the primary things you're going to want to view are leads, contact form submissions, viewing specific content. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to track some of the different buttons on my website and how you can go about doing that with this tool. So there's two things you can do here if you look right at this tool. There's track a new button or track a URL. I'm gonna do the button portion first. If I wanna track a button, you'll see that my website changes based on the different elements on the page. So this button here along with this button are able to be dynamically tracked with an element. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this one right here to check out my blog. And then I can say what this event is. So I'm going to say this here for the purposes of this video is going to be the view content um, event. And now if I confirm that, now this has been set up as view content. Great, so now when someone clicks that button, I'm gonna know that they clicked this button on my page and now they're, they've engaged with my site in more than one way other than just going to the website and then bouncing. So this allows me to track another checkpoint on the website for my Facebook audience if I wanna build some upper funnel Facebook campaign, which is great. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to track here is my YouTube channel, but for purposes of this video, let's pretend this is a purchase piece. And um, this was you know, the last step you would click before purchasing, and I'm not able to mock that up because I don't have an e-commerce website. But the setup process is still the same. So if I wanted to track this button, if this was my add to cart, what I can do is click on that and then say this was the add to cart, great. Now I can track all the add to carts and I can even exclude add to cart audiences if I want for some of my, my remarketing audiences if I don't wanna hit the, those specific people, especially for lookalikes. But the most valuable thing here for e-commerce and businesses is going to be the purchase piece. And you'll see what's going to happen here in this value piece. You're going to want to typically include a value on the page, meaning it's going to reference another cell or another element or variable on the page and then say, hey, Pixel, 
reference this variable on my website when pulling, and then that way dynamically it'll pull things like subtotal or total, and then dynamically reference that for your pixel. Or you can do do not include a value, which I do not recommend. Typically you wanna make sure you're pulling that value piece. So now you can see the website changes again when I select choose a value on this page. And again, let's pretend that this is my subtotal here on the site. And in fact, I should be able, through the power of coding and inspect element, I should just be able to dynamically change this here real quick. So why don't I just call this like $100? $100 and we'll delete this thing here. So. Again, for purposes of this video, this is my subtotal. Again, kind of janky, but if we wanna track this, say this is a purchase, great, and now I can include the value on the page. Guess what? This is my subtotal or whatever is on your website if you're an e-commerce business. Now what's going to happen is anytime somebody purchases or clicks that event, they will then reference this piece right here, which is the subtotal. Now. If you're an e-commerce business, you likely don't wanna do this until you get to that final stage when they click on purchase, which in that case, I would recommend using that value from initiate checkout. Or if you go to track a URL, you can make sure you track your thank you page URL. So if I had raceauville.com slash thank you and somebody landed on that page, I could track that as a purchase and then use the value on my thank you page. And then I can only get people who get to that thank you page and then the purchase will be referred. So. There's a couple of ways to do it. Um, no way is better than the other. I would highly recommend for e-commerce businesses to look at this thank you page version. So if you, again, if you go to track a URL, go to your thank you page, make that be a purchase. Or if you do the initiate checkout version, and if you say, this is the value for initiate checkout, great. And then when you make it a purchase, you can reference that value from initiate checkout. So it's just a different way to approach that when setting up events on your website. So for now, I'm just gonna wanna check out the check out my blog piece because I would actually like that information to understand how many people are you know, interacting with that button on my website once it is live. So if you go to finish that up when you're all done with this, and then if you go to finish, um, I'm gonna have them not ask me again, and it was very helpful, Facebook. Thank you so much for doing that for me. But once you click finish, it's going to say event setup complete. And I'm actually gonna not test the events right now, but I'm gonna show you how to test the events. And then what you can see on your pixel once you refresh it is you'll see view content on the bottom of the screen now. So now I'm going to see once people view my content on the page, um, I can then test those events to see if they're interacting with that page. So if you go back to test events here on the left-hand menu, enter in your website URL, and mine is a non-indexed page right now, which will eventually become my new homepage. But you'll see here, my page view has just fired in the test events, great, because I have my Facebook pixel placed on all pages of my website, so great, you can see the page view is now firing, perfect. And now when I click on this check out my blog portion, I should see an event fire for that view content element that I just placed on there. So. Um, I'm sorry, the, the view content event. So once you click on check out my blog, I just clicked it, nothing's gonna happen because it's not set up to interact with anything yet, it will. But you can see now that I clicked on that button, I can see view content on here because I set that up that way and now it's referencing that in the code. So just a really great way to start tracking more events on your website outside of just initial page views. And I would recommend on your website to set up as many events that you think is valuable to your business. Again, e-com businesses, you wanna do add to cart, search, and purchase, definitely, if not more. And then e -com, um, sorry, lead generation businesses, you typically wanna look at leads, contact, and potentially view content. And the reason for that is every initiative and different campaigns that you set up through Facebook Ads Manager, you may have a campaign, a remarketing campaign, for instance, that's gonna be a no-brainer where you're gonna to wanna to hammer the bottom of that funnel and make sure you push push purchases or leads as much as possible. But you may have something higher up in the funnel. For example, this view content. I may wanna run an ad campaign at some point to try to get more and more people to check out my blog. Obviously, that's not relevant for, my, for me right now, but for you, what this means, if you have something higher up in the funnel, like a lead generation um, tactic, so like a white paper, 
you may want to push that white paper with a different campaign objective outside of pressing a, a purchase because it's going to be a much larger audience. It's going to be something that will eventually lead to something lower in the funnel. But for now, you're going to start with that higher in the funnel piece. So I'll make sure to cover more of that in a future video. But for now, that's the reasoning behind setting up all these different events. So let me know below in the comments if you'd like to learn more about how to approach different campaigns based on the events that you have set up. Um, and I'd definitely love to explore that more. But for now, that's pretty much all you need to know for setting up events through this really nifty tool. It came out in the past year and a half or so, and I've been using it a bunch, and I thought I would share it with all of you. So definitely make sure to let me know if you have any questions, and until next time, thanks, see ya.